Steve Listen, um, I'm going to try and work this into my act really quick. I know it's nothing you like to do this, but I want three people to stand up really quick. Rachel Clanton, Justin Kaiser, and Jory Prinsky. Just real quick, guys, just stand up just for a second, please. Justin, Rachel, Jory. Okay, this is the six degrees of separation, okay? Justin, your folks and I were best friends in Nashville, Tennessee. In the early 80s, we didn't do anything but lay around in the sun all day and dance all night, okay? Rachel, your father moved to Nashville, Tennessee because your Uncle Dean lived there. Your dad, your dad, and I worked in the same restaurant. Your dad started back to school. Your dad and me packed our cars and moved to Fort Lauderdale. Your dad had a kick-ass yellow Spitfire, okay? We get to Fort Lauderdale, we moved to North Miami. Our first friend, who was much younger at the time, was Jory. Your dad and my dad's first friend, and Jory taught us all about how to be cool in Miami, and she is still as cool as hell. Six degrees of separation is crazy. And of course, your folks have been married for years, your folks have been married for years, Jory and Bill have been married for years, and I'm the neurotic comic. <laughs> I'm in a suit, and if you guys aren't used to seeing me in a suit, normally I'm in my black work clothes, or my underwear. <laughs> I said to the girl downstairs, what? It's a mattress bathing suit. <laughs> Who doesn't think other garbage would be done? Politically correct. What is up? Do people even still use that term politically correct? It drives me crazy. Let me tell you something. My father, God rest his soul, was a world traveler in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And in the 90s, my father, my sister Laurie, and I were sitting in the airport cocktail lounge in Nashville, Tennessee. And my dad says to the waitress, Sweetheart, can you bring us another round? The waitress rolls her eyes and scoffs and walks away. And my sister goes, Daddy, you know, you can't speak to the help like that, to the service people like that anymore. Because she and I both have been. Before. And she goes, you can't speak to service people like that anymore. It's just not done. It's not politically correct. And my dad looks at me and I, and I go, yeah, Pop, you know, we just can't say that stuff anymore. And my dad's like, he was mortified. He's like, well, I, saw, I meant no disrespect. That's just how we flatter waiters and waitresses back in the day. The waitress comes back to the room and drinks. She puts it down on the table. And my dad goes, thanks, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> True story. Politically correct. Can't say this, can't say that. I say whatever I want to now. You don't like it. Uh, it all started about two years ago when I was in the supermarket, and I'm standing there, true story, trying to decide whether to buy pumpernickel or wheat. A pumpernickel or wheat. And this very short, heavy black woman, is, she's strutting up the aisle. And I politely stepped back and said, pardon me. And I swear to God, she jammed her hand in my face, and she goes, I hate reptile. <laughs> and she kept walking, and I stood there and scratched my head. And I was like, did she just call me a... Oh, come on, nobody. That, she did! And that's where some cog went boing. And I couldn't let it go. Ladies and gentlemen, I followed her up and I tapped her on the shoulder. And she turned around, we're in the checkout area, and she turned around and I said, I beg your pardon, did you just call me a reptile? And she put her hand on her head, started doing that Jerry Springer neck thing back and forth, which I still can't do. And she said, That's what I said, reptile! And before she could say another word, I said, Let me tell you something, woman. It is 2013, and I'm not afraid to bitch slap anybody in public. You just need to get out of here. And she did. She ran out the front door. And I was like, oh. and then I look at everybody in the checkout area standing there with their jaw. I'm like, she started it. <laughs> <laughs> the older I get, the more loud, cynical, and just plain mean I become. And you know what? I don't care. <laughs> I laughed at work the other day. And this kid goes, hey, your face moved. And I was like, this double chin is your future. <laughs> I am constantly yelling at little kids, get off of my lawn! I don't even have a lawn. <laughs> I'm in the service industry, and I was waiting on these two Persian women the other day, and I guess one of them just, she, honestly, she just didn't like my look. And she looked at me and she said, look at you, a man of your age doing this for a living. You should be ashamed. And she and her friend laughed. They laughed. And I looked at her and I said, well, you know what? I can do this for a living because I don't have somebody like you at home sucking the life out of me. <laughs> Okay, that's all, ladies and gentlemen. I'm surprised I still have you. How many of y'all have ever been in the service industry? Uh, bartender, host, waiter, waitress, right? Ballet. God forbid, retail. Oh, my God. Poor retail people. I never wear this. You right there? It's me. Anyway, I've been a bartender for over 30 years. 30 years. I love bartending. It's a lot of fun. The latest thing now, though, is 
I was overserved. I was overserved. You're responsible because I was overserved. You know, when you're a fucking drunk, you just fell down and cracked your skull. Overserved. My motto is you have an airbag, have another. <laughs> and you know, it seems to me like, at least from a bartender's point of view, bars are like art galleries now when it comes to the topics of distillation and fermentation. Everybody is like, well, you know, the Jack Daniels, and honey, barrels, and for seven years, and in my head I'm like, oh, oh. and they're like, oh, what do you think? And I look at the bottom and I go, it says pregnant women shouldn't drink it. <laughs> Care. Oh, well, geez, man. Tequila and cigarettes. Oh, that's it. Here are people in bars, ladies and gentlemen. Here are people in bars. Here are white people in bars. We'd like to taste every one of your 26 wines by the glass because we have recently been to Napa. <laughs> and we now belong to the Malibu Wine Reach Wine of the Month Club. <laughs> We want something that's earthy, plummy, jammy, and cheap. <laughs> Persian people are a friggin' riot. You read me the menu. It is not my job to read the one this or the menu. It is your job to read the one this or the menu. No eye contact, of course. So read me the menu. Black people. I can pick them up all in this! <laughs> Those are people that they just drink water and take pictures of the food. This is big. I came and said, I'm glad the baby starts speaking. You know, ordering Spanish, you're like, oh, no, sorry, sir. I, I don't speak Spanish. And you call me a racist. Me. I'm going to say the eighth time this week, somebody's called me a racist. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I am no cracker racist, ladies and gentlemen. I am white. I'm Christian. I smoke cigarettes. I am gay. I don't speak a word of Spanish, and I live in Los Angeles, California. I'm a friggin' minority. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I let the cat out of the bag. I'm a homosexual. I shouldn't I should say queer because it might have been some fag somewhere. <laughs> I'm a confirmed bachelor. For, you know, confirmed bachelor nowadays means gay. And I'll never forget the first time I heard the term confirmed bachelor. It's hilarious. 1969, I'm eight years old in the Dean house and the phone rings. I pick it up. Hello? Bob, it's your Aunt Dorla. Get your mom. Mom, it's Aunt Dorla. Stella, my mom, comes over, picks up the phone. She goes, her eyes get this big. She goes, which meant bring me my fancy and hedges because this is going to be a long girl talk. <laughs> And she fires one of the things up and goes, I heard Betty's brother is a confirmed homosexual. Oh, no, wait, she's a confirmed bachelor. And I'm like, Mom, what's a confirmed bachelor? You already thought I shot the dog. She's like, um, uh, you don't need to do these kind of things. Go, go out in the backyard. Go, go, go take a swim. Unsupervised, of course. <laughs> it was the 60s. There was no supervision. Give me a break. Stella. In our Bonneville station wagon with nine screaming Cub Scouts jumping all around. She got on her tortoiseshell cat eye glasses, smoking a Benson and Hedges with the windows up. <laughs> Saying, it's not unusual to have fun with anyone. Get her a seatbelt once then. That was Stella's back end. Sit down! <laughs> but I digress. So yeah, I'm gay. I'm a bear. A bear is a big fat guy with body hair. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, do I have body hair? I'm ashamed. <laughs> I fell asleep in the pool last year. The aliens made a crop circle on my back. <laughs> no, it is. <laughs> when I'm in an intimate situation, my partner's favorite pillow talk is. <laughs> Okay, you got one of else manscaped? That's just stupid. 
<laughs> no, thanks, fellas. I just, you know, I don't care. I, you know, I, I go to the 24 hour fitness in Santa Monica just because I, you know, I like guys. I mean, I greet anybody in the locker room. That's just queer. I swear to God. But anyway, I came out of the shower the other day and there's this nice looking young guy, I swear, he's got his leg up like this and a razor and he's shaving his nuts. His buddy is about 10 feet away, naked, shaving his butt. And the one guy says to his friend, he goes, man, this is so unfair. Tom Brady royally got screwed. And my first thought was, damn, it's a good thing you guys aren't at the 24 hour fitness in West Hollywood, you both get screwed. <laughs> Uh, you know what? Douchebag is my favorite word. I use it all the time. It's time for Bob's douchebag tonight. If you are in the crosswalk, taking your time, God forbid, texting, when I'm trying to turn right, and you are not in a wheelchair or pushing a baby carriage, you're a douchebag. I had to break a little plastic things out of my, my horn, so I wouldn't be like, all the time. <laughs> if you park in a handicapped spot and you're not handicapped, you're a friggin' douchebag. Right? I've had people say, I write for Yelp. I'm like, douchebag. <laughs> I'm sorry, if you carry a dog in your purse. <laughs> uh, somebody's carrying a dog in their purse right now. Don't tell me it's a service dog and it's not all kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> My dog is Chris Chat. <laughs> you know, let's give it up for the people that really need to use service dogs because service dogs work their asses off and they're trained and they're loved and they save people from seizures and they help blind people. We'll get around town and we've got all these rich bitches now who can go online, I'm on my soapbox, and get a thing that says service dogs so they can bring it into a restaurant and feed it. I'm like, boom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And another douchebag, let me tell you something. If you really, honest to God, care about what any Kardashian, Jenner, or Lamar Odom are doing this week, you're a douchebag. Yeah. <laughs> the poor house, Viagra, bless his heart, he's gonna live. <laughs> Hooray. <laughs> Who came up with the concept of compact parking spaces? Right? I have a 25 year old wood station wagon with the wood grain sides and the glass bubble roof, and I can compact that son of a bitch anywhere I want to. <laughs> I push a smart car out of way more than once. <laughs> I am such a douchebag. <laughs> you guys, thank you so much. You've been terrific. I'm